Welcome back to Film Bites. I'm Andy the Dad. And I'm Jack the Lad. And this time we've actually got an absolute treat for you. Don't we? Late Night with the Devil. Jack, what did you think? Okay, we need to clear up by saying this was a movie we wasn't entirely sure we would see at first. Because timing-wise of the movie, it's unfortunately a limited release. Uh, it is a Shudder original as well, yes. I should say. Um, so because of their streaming service, it basically means that they have a limited release in cinemas and then it will go onto their platform as well. Because of this process, not everyone will get to see the movies in cinemas um, because, you know, timings, just in general. So we weren't sure if we would get to see this because there's quite a few movies out this week and next week as well. And um, we just thought, you know what, let's, let's chance it because at the end of the day, it looks like an interesting concept. And it's essentially 1977, a talk show on Halloween, they have all these interesting guests that come on air. What could possibly go wrong? I think this is an absolutely incredible little piece. I mean, I was I was actually quite excited by the trailer. It was a trailer that did actually pique my interest from the moment of seeing yes, it. Yes, yeah. Um, it kind of it went a little bit viral with some of the poster work and and some of the bits and bobs that were around on the internet. Mm. I mean, for one thing, the, the amount of people that must have put some money into this after seeing the project. Mm. I mean, there must have been what. 10 to 12 film companies involved right at the uh, beginning. We were actually almost chuckling to ourselves because of the amount of things that were just starting. So once we saw, and I'm going to say it, it was a TV, we were going, is it another studio? Nope, the background indicates that it's the movie. Whew! Because we had so many studios yeah. at the start, it was unbelievable. But honestly, fair enough to all those companies because they were brilliant for it. But absolutely wow. Um, it, it's, it's just a masterclass. I have not been as excited about a horror movie like this in absolutely years. Um, I was blown away by such a simple premise done so well. I mean, it, it literally sets itself out as a late, a late night Letterman type show of the yes. 70s. Yeah. It, it, it knows what boxes to tick from that and it skillfully uses its budget by keeping it all in this one setting mm. uh, it reminded me from that aspect there's another film called Pontypool uh, which also sets itself in a radio studio mm. and it just gave me those vibes that this is a clever bit of cinema mm. um, I haven't felt this excited about horror I would say since watching Ghost Watch way back in the 80s which is something that I grew up with yes um, absolutely blew me away one Halloween and is, is something that lived with me. And I've got a funny feeling that this film is going to live with me for quite a while as well. Yeah. Rent free in my head. This is exactly the kind of horror that I want to see. Yeah. I think recently in terms of horror, it's had a bit of a resurgence, if I may say. Ooh. So a bit more of originality going off, a bit more of those fun callbacks to things, but also reinventing a lot of the rules of horror. Yeah. And because of that... It's flourishing. It is really doing a good job at the moment. And with Late Night with the Devil, it is no exception. It is just, it absolutely has it all. It, yeah. it, it basically sets the tone the moment you're in. Um, giving feet, basically giving a kind of set tone background of who the character is of this, the, of this talk show and exactly, you know, how it's running at the moment, what station it's on. It's, it's basically giving you the whole recap up until this point it's almost like a documentary if you will mm. and because of that it's quite like ah, oh, okay so i wasn't quite expecting the documentary part but now that we have context it's gonna hurt more you kind of lose yourself into this world that they've created mm. you, you almost feel like you are spectating on this genuine show that happened yeah that is just absolutely crazy mm. And it's it's one of those films that skillfully builds and builds and brings you with it the the twists and turns the the believability of the actors. Mm. I mean, David Dasmalchian. Yes. Wow, this is a performance that's just a defining moment. Uh, I mean, I, I, I loved him in in Suicide Squad. We've seen him in so much. Yeah. He, he, um... I've actually had someone say to me these exact words. He's a face you remember, but not a name you remember, which is such a shame. And I was one of those people. I yeah. actually asked you, do you know the name? Yeah. Luckily, you said it. And I was just like, oh, that's who it is. Um, with his performance, 
it's believable that he is Jack Delroy, who is basically this talk show host. He's got the charisma, the charisma, I should say, those characterisms of the, those talk show hosts that we see nowadays and back in the 70s as well. Certain gags and ideas that wouldn't be allowed today because it was actually trying to boost the ratings up. Yes, it's the cheesy it mannerisms. It's yes. the, the ego that drives somebody to do these kind of talk shows. You get little insights into his own sort of family life. Yes. You get hints of occultism, which mm. you're likely to in a film that's titled this. Well, yeah. But that build, the introduction of certain characters, the sound, the the, mm. the beautiful way in which it makes you feel like you are watching something genuinely of its time. Yeah. The film stock, the edits, the little phrases and fuzziness. Yes, with static screen transitions. Yeah. Oh my goodness. I mean, it, even it down to the, the four by three. Yes. Um, that the aspect ratio has changed in this movie quite a bit, showing what is the perspective of someone and what is the perspective of if, let's say, you put this VHS in and then you're watching it from a perspective of what the hell happened in the seventies. Yeah, and it, it's really clever because the way I read, and I'll have to say this afterwards because I don't want to spoil it. There is some really good moments towards the end of the movie that it's been built up towards that point, and it. It's just, in my opinion, it's a twist that I really enjoyed. I understand that it seems to be a twist that not everyone will get, I think, but we'll see. I mean, I've not really seen that myself, but I, I genuinely thought the twist, it's not, not really a twist, is it? It's more of a build to the point yes. of impact. There, there's so many ideas that are played around with that's so fun, down to the diegetic sound of the 70s. So with 70s videos, you'll notice that the sound quality isn't going to be up to par, like on a podcast, for example, or a YouTube video, or on a movie these days, mm -hmm. because the microphones have much more improved boom mics obviously back in the 70s they still picked up little bits of interference they still have this kind of static undertone under the voices yeah. because they don't have everything that noise cancels it mm -hmm. so they, they keep that in the movie because it is absolutely authentic to the 70s so yeah. it, it, already the setting has been established incredibly well and down to the costume design as well i've got to say brilliant department because it, I believe we were in the 70s. Yes. Down to every minute detail. It, the shirts, the flannels, everything. It was all there, the, even down the, to the Halloween costumes. Yeah, the believability is genuinely what carries this film. Yeah. Um, it doesn't feel ploddy. It, it feels like a, a burn that takes you with it. Mm. It takes you by the hand and is going to give you a light, nice little bumpy ride. Yeah. And wow, does it do that. It does a I mean, marvellous job. You've got the theremin sound effect, which I just <laughs> Which they, they really played into yeah. as well, which I enjoyed as well. You had little notes of a lot of classic features. Mm. I mean, obviously, you've got a little bit of a note of The Exorcist. You've got some Cronenberg stuff yes. in there as well. And I, it, this, this really deserves a much bigger audience. Than, and more attention. Than a couple of weeks' release. I mean, I know it's going to be going on Shudder because I know that they've obviously invested in yeah. this film. And quite why yeah. somebody bigger didn't come in for this film is just beyond me. It is, I am so excited by this film. You've mm. got to go and see this film if you can, or if it certainly arrives on Shudder, rent it, buy it, support this project, because this is the kind of horror movie that I genuinely want to see. We have seen, what, two of the Bloomhouse efforts this year. Yes, and they are unfortunately efforts. I mean, we enjoyed yeah. Night Swim. Yeah. It was a it was a decent movie. But it they're really not good. in the same league as what this movie is. No, 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 no. It's so, clever, yeah. it's acerbic, it's got all the right points, mm. it's got a masterclass acting performance. It delivers all of the vibes of those classic horror things that you want to see. Yeah. I I do you know what? I actually loved this movie. Mm. And I can't recommend it highly enough i just want to mention a few more points as well go for um, it even down to a character that we have i don't want to spoil it again but the trailer hints at certain things um we have ingrid torelli who plays lily and i'll just say that my word what a performance because yes it plays into those cliches yes it plays into those things that we have seen in previous horror movies but it does it well because you you already have that that feeling of if you're a horror fan you're comfortable because it's a, it's a, oh yeah, we've got another, I can't say the character name, it's real, because that's a spoiler. Mm -hmm. But um, there's another situation to a movie associated to where I'd say something like, let's say The Exorcist, and mm -hmm. I won't say too much about that. But 
it sets the tone and you're like, okay, I'm comfortable because I know what's going to happen. Yeah. And because of that, it pulls you in and it does a really nice job of twisting it and going, actually, no, we're not quite there yet. Here's what we're going to show you. Yeah. And it, it flips the table. It does everything so differently. Yeah. And I thought, oh, we did that. Okay. Yeah. Wasn't expecting that. Um, but I mean, at the same time, it, there's just so much going on, but it's so well done. This was one of the first films where you've actually felt unnerved in a long while. Yeah. I, I usually when it, I think the last time I properly felt unnerved when I was a bit younger, I'd probably say The Exorcist was the most unnerving, if I'm yeah. honest with you, because it's, it's the feeling of, well, you're in a house, you've got an exorcist, you've got a girl that's strapped to a bed because God knows what's happened. It was her that was really uncomfortable, though. Mm -hmm. and it, was, it wasn't even that. It, even when she wasn't in the scenes that played about, oh, my word, you felt that kind of tension. You felt that, that sense of dread because there was something wrong all the time, and you felt that. And even in this, I had that same kind of feeling where I was enjoying it because it was basically the build... But I knew that something wasn't right. I, I know it, it tells you something's not going to be right. You know that something's going to happen. It's just a matter of when. And I think we, we always had the feeling when it was going to be. Mm. But even when it does happen, it hits you. And you go, you, you, I don't expect it. I really didn't expect it. And it's not built around simple sound effect jump scares. No, no, no. It's already drawn you into the point where... Oh, this this is a little creepy. Mm. I'm, oh, I'm getting a bit on Saturday. Yeah, exactly, and, yeah. And for the first time in a long, long time, I just enjoyed the very nature of what this horror movie presents. Mm. Um, oh, I'd, I'd go and see it again in a heartbeat. I agree. I wish this was on longer in cinemas and had more times to be shown about because this is a movie that I just think is a treat. It is just... oh, Basically, I'm gushing over this movie. And it's because I don't usually feel that sense of dread and impending doom on something that feels so comfortable at the same time. It's it's yeah. it is so uncomfortable, but I love it. It's it's I, I, it's going to be a weird term to say here, but lovably uncomfortable. Yes, um, that's yeah. the way I would point well, out this, this movie. This is why we go to horror movies. This is yes. we, we want a visceral experience. We want something that's going to make us feel like. You know, the anguish and, and, a, and a build, but not only that, but a, a really good story. Yeah. Really well told. And, well, look, I think it's it's fairly obvious here that we love this movie. Yes. So, <laughs> Late Night with the Devil, if you get the opportunity before it goes out of the cinemas to see this movie, please, please do so. It's a real treat. And I can't recommend it enough. Not myself, honestly. It is just, it's spectacular. If you're a film student as well, I think this is one to enjoy. Thank you so much for joining us on this episode of Film Bites Podcast. We hope you enjoyed our discussion about all things film. We love creating content for movie buffs like you. And if you had a good time today, please consider supporting us. We have a little favour. If you liked what you saw and heard, give that like button a gentle tap down there. And if you haven't already, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you never miss an episode from us. We try and publish at least one episode each week, so stay in the loop for more movie magic and insightful discussion. Also, don't be shy to ring that notification bell. It's like your personal VIP pass to our latest content. Your support genuinely means the world to us. It's what keeps us going and growing as a podcast. So from the bottom of our movie-loving hearts, thank you. Remember to follow us on social media and feel free to leave your thoughts and suggestions in the comments. We love hearing from you. Until next time, film biders, keep watching, keep loving, and keep sharing your film passion with the world. Thanks for being part of the Film Bites podcast community. See you in the next episode.